Hello. So uh, at this point in the course, uh, we've got this idea of integration where we're summing up. Uh, we have a function and we think about the area under the graph somehow be, being equivalent to kind of adding up that function in a continuous way. And now we've seen that that's connected to the reverse idea, that when we do that integration, um, the function we were summing up was the rate of change of the function we got. So integration, uh, we've got some function, and then integration goes, uh, integrates to another function, that's the accumulation. If we start with the accumulation, the derivative, or differentiation, takes us down to the rate of change of that function. Uh, so of the great many applications in calculus, a lot of it comes from being able to think about that rate of change, right? How is the function changing? Um, uh, and being able to use the derivative to identify the key parts. In fact, those places where the derivative says, wait, something is happening there, um, are often where the derivative is zero, and those are called critical points of the function. Uh, so we want to play around a little bit in general, and then have you work on some application problems. Okay? Uh, so we're going to switch over to Web GeoGebra so you have another tool to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up. Here you can see my many, many tabs. Um, and we're going to go to Web, uh, just like it says up there, dot GeoGebra dot org. Okay, so uh, calculator comes up. It's a, quite a similar look uh, to Desmos. Uh, you can see that there are some other uh, abilities here that we'll hopefully have a chance to use over the course of the semester. Uh, the geometry calculator, right, um, lets us draw shapes, uh, but instead let's go back to the algebra. We want this. We can even do stuff in polar coordinates. We can even do stuff in isometric coordinates. Well, we want our regular square grid, then we'll add the axis in. So uh, you can drag, just click in the screen, and uh, move the graph around. And much like uh, Desmos, you can just type in a function. So if we type in some function, um, let's say 5 minus, I want a parabola, okay, so thinking vertex form, uh, this means that the vertex of the parabola will be at 3, 5, um, we can type in points to get them to appear. If we click the point tool, we can click on an object and put a point on that object. We can select the, it shows us the value instead of the name, and then move that point and see how it changes. So we've got this maximum value. Um, so we've got this curve, so with the derivative of it, um, as we're looking, we know it's increasing here. So the slope, the change of rate, is going to be positive in this part. The slope here is zero. It's not increasing at one moment in time, and then it's negative. So when we graph the derivative, we should get... Uh, just what we said we were going to get. Okay, so I'll go ahead and enter. Uh, GeoGebra went ahead and computed the derivative for us. It uses this uh, f prime if you've got some function. Um, and we can say it's positive, uh, but decreasing in how positive. So that here the slope is increasing quickly. As you get up here, it's slowing down. Here it's zero. Slope is zero. After that, it's starting, the function is starting to decrease, so the slope is negative. All right, 
But if we wanted to find the maximum of a function, um, a maximum is naturally going to have that spot where the slope is zero. So if we try to solve kind of where that's zero, um, that tells us where the maximum is going to be. Okay, and I paused for just a second to make sure I could do what I wanted to do because the I usually use the uh, downloaded program, uh, but here I'm using the web form because I figure you're more likely to use the web form. And I wanted to make sure that you could do this in both places. They're pretty good about the functionality uh, being the same in both places, but there are occasional differences. So uh, we were talking about how I wanted to know where the derivative is equal to zero. So I'm just going to type that in here. And when I was checking that it does the same thing, look, it identified the point. Where is uh, the point on f prime where that's equal to zero? Well, for some reason, it changed this. Oh, because I set f prime of x equal to zero. Yeah. Okay, so when I put f prime of x equals zero, it redefined uh, the derivative to be zero, which is why it made the point level. So to let it know the direction we want it to go, we want to know, we have to type it in in the reverse. So it knows we're not trying to define zero to be f prime of x. Uh, so that way now it's looking for where it goes. So hit return, and there we've got that uh, x equals three, it defined it as a line. Right? So uh, we've got this spot on the derivative. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. That should get rid of it, pretty much everything else. And we'll delete a. So let's make a new function. x cubed, see if we can get a, a bump in it somewhere. Oops. I did a right arrow that got me out of the exponent. Minus 2x squared. Oh, good bumps. And we'll add a linear term. Oh, too big, too big, too big. Uh, just plus x. Uh, we still have bumps. And we'll lift it up a little bit. Okay. So your mission is to take this function and find out where exactly do these two bumps occur. Okay. So go ahead and do that. That's the start of the math practice. And then on the lesson document, uh, there will also be some application problems uh, for you to do. So those are, for the most part, uh, figure out an equation that describes the situation and use the derivative to find the extreme points. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy these. This is getting into um, some real mechanics of the universe sort of stuff for me. <laughs>